So this is the uh, first slide. This is Ayn Thoven, who um, was the first person to record an ECG. And this is how he recorded an electrocardiogram. Uh, and uh, as you guys know, most of you should know that he got the Nobel Prize for, uh, he's uh, the father of electrocardiogram. He invented the ECG. Uh, when we do an ECG, we, call a, we have a thing called the Eindhoven's Triangle, which is the basis of looking at the uh, vector and the direction of every, you know, the QRS, the P waves that we see on an ECG. And so this is a basic thing that everybody should be familiar with. And that is the lead one, which goes between the left arm and the right arm. Then there is a lead two, which goes from the left arm to the left foot. And then lead three, that goes from the right arm to the left foot. So the general rule is lead two is equal to one plus three. If you take one plus three, it becomes lead two. So this is a basic fundamental principle that you should know. And you should understand this is how basic ECG is started and done. Uh, so everything else is based on that. So I always keep an, this image in my head about lead one, lead two, and lead three. And then once I know that, I can derive everything that I see on the ECG based on this. So this is a example of some of the you know, initial ECG recordings that were done. As you guys know, the ECG con consists of the P wave, which represents activation of the upper chambers of the heart or the atrium, followed by conduction through the AV node, and then activation of the lower chamber of the heart, which is the ventricle, which has three parts to it, which is called the QRS, the Q, which is the first negative deflection, R wave, which is the first positive deflection, and then S wave is a second negative deflection. Then followed by repolarization of the ventricle, which is called the QT interval. And uh, you always have to have a T wave associated with the QRS, because the T wave means repolarization of the ventricle. Without that, the next polarization will not happen. So the basic three leads that I showed you are lead one, two and three. Uh, this slide shows you the augmented lead on the ECG. The augmented leads on the ECG are the uh, AVR, AVL and AVF. Uh, and this is how they are derived. So AVR is the right arm, augmented right arm lead, augmented left arm lead, and then the augmented lead in the left foot. Uh, this slide will show you vectors of the ECG. So that is the direction in which electrical activation happens in the heart. And this is very important to understand if you're going to be reading ECGs because uh, you can, by looking at orientation of the QRS and the P waves in different leads, you can derive what the vector is and what is the normal vector and what is happening to if you have disease state in the patient. So the initial activation you can see with these arrows, this is how the initial QRS activation uh, spreads throughout the ventricle. So you can see activation that is spreading over here. That's how it spreads through the ventricle. And that's how we get the vector of activation. This is the normal. If you have a normal heart, this is how the vector activation works. So the vector loops can be directed more anteriorly, more leftward, more rightward, more inferiorly, more posteriorly, depending on different disease processes that can happen. So this is the, again, same thing. You have a vector activation of the normal activation of the heart, of the ventricles. This is how it goes. 
if the patient develops left ventricular hypertrophy, and the vector is shifted towards the left. If the patient has left bundle branch block, again, the vector is shifted towards the left. If the patient develops right ventricular hypertrophy, the vector loop will be directed towards the right side. If the patient has right bundle branch block, the vector will be activated towards the right side of the heart. Uh, then one of the main uses of the ECG is to diagnose coronary artery disease and myocardial infarction. Uh, and so to diagnose that, you again look at the vector loops that develop and you look at the ASTP wave changes. So if somebody has had uh, anterior myocardial infarction, this kind, this is the orientation of the vector loop. So it is directed more towards the left side. Same thing with inferior myocardial infarction. And then if you have a posterior myocardial infarction, you have more rightward activation of the vectors. So as I told you earlier, the three different things that you notice on the ECG are the P wave, the QRS, and the T wave. So if you look at the P wave, the duration of the P wave varies from 0 0.08 seconds to 0 0.11 seconds. Uh, usually, if you do an ECG on a 25 millimeter speed, one small box that is recorded on the digitized ECG represents 40 milliseconds. So if you have five of those, then uh, that represents about uh, two seconds, okay? So you, based on that, you can derive the rate, of the, the heart rate that the patient has. So in the limb, limb leads, usually you will have some notching uh, and it's the P waves are in sinus rhythm are upright in lead one and two. And they should be upright in uh, AVF. There might be some notching that you can notice in V1 and V2. In the limb leads, the amplitude is less than two and a half small boxes. And uh, the, on the precordial leads, it would be less than one and a half millimeters. So the time that it takes from, to go from the P wave to the QRS is the PR interval on the ECG, which represents conduction through the atrium and through the AV node. The usual duration for that is 0.12 to 0.2 seconds. And that is usually referred to as the PR interval. If it is shorter than that, 0.12, then one has to think about some other abnormal ways of conduction. The most likely scenario is what we call as Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, where patients have another way of conducting to the ventricle that bypasses the AV node. If it is longer than 0.2 milliseconds, then we refer it to as prolonged PR interval. And I'll show you different examples of that, uh, different conditions that cause that. The PR segment is the segment from the P wave to the R wave. It's usually flat, but if it is more than 0.5 millimeters, then we call it PR elevation. If it is less than 0.8 millimeters, then we call it PR depression. And this has implications in terms of looking at uh, damage to the atria. So PR uh, elevation would be seen in uh, conditions like uh, where you have a small infarction of the atrium. PR depression is usually seen in patients who have conditions like pericarditis, 